This video is in loving memory of Tom Gebhardt. My studio has been pretty quiet this year and I'm sure you all have been wondering where I am. And um, I can't believe that it's summer, not just the beginning of summer, but midsummer, late summer already. And it's been such a sad year for me. Um, Tom and I met when I was 18. There we are. <laughs> right there and 19 years old and it was I wouldn't say love at first sight he just grew on me and he was just so kind compassionate f funny intelligent just a very sweet and beautiful spiritual um, shaman and I loved him for 18 years we were together as a couple and we had a very loving relationship so much so that we remained friends long after our marriage ended and he wasn't just a friend he was my best friend so when he got sick I was heartbroken and I took him to the coast even when he didn't feel good and forced him to <laughs> spend time together but you know, he just got sicker and sicker, and eventually I could see the end was coming. And we spent a lot of time video chatting, and and then eventually Tom passed away of kidney failure in January. Of course I was completely heartbroken, but on the very same day that Tom passed away, my partner and I of eight years broke up. And suddenly I was totally without the two closest people in my life and I just can't explain how challenging it was for me mentally I tried to keep doing things to make myself feel better like swimming another day another swim thanks for all your kindness everybody but the truth is, I was spending more and more time in bed and not feeling good. And I just started getting sick. And I mean really, really sick. And it was just one weird, crazy um, bacterial infection after another with um, all kinds of infections. And I had a terrible infection in my leg. Um, my skin, my eye, like it just kept going and going and I was battling all this without antibiotics because I'm allergic to antibiotics and you know eventually the fever got so bad that I um, you know I tried everything natural and, and I just had to take some antibiotics and then I ended up having allergic reactions and in the hospital and it just has been months and months of going through this process and meanwhile I'm honest I'm making art to keep my mind off of grief and heartbreak I was trying to post on social media um, you know pretending everything is okay for the most part but the truth is it, I was really suffering you know and trying to make someone else feel joy even if I wasn't feeling joy at the moment but the truth is I was really suffering and uh, and then my beautiful mom came and I hadn't seen her in eight years and her arrival was such an uplift to my spirit and we did some art together which was really fun I do like it looks like we're having a seance though right now <laughs> Looks really cool on camera. Ooh. <laughs> I never get to see anyone's hand but my own. <laughs> it was so nice to see her and that was really the beginning of me starting to feel better. And so the next thing I did was take myself to the coast because the ocean has always been a place where I feel healing. and. The, at this point, 
I had been sick for months and months. I mean, this was like May, and I was still sick. And so I took myself to the coast, even though I did not feel great. But just driving along some of the roads, seeing all the beautiful scenery, and just looking out at the water, the beautiful coastline, and the ocean. It was really calming for me. And I'm not going to say I just immediately started feeling better, but there is something about being in nature and being near the water that's just so healing. And I don't know. It definitely lifted my spirits, and I needed something that was just going to just going to lift my spirits and remind me of all the beautiful things in life. I took a lot of really pretty pictures while I was there too and just felt the joy and peace of the ocean. And then while I was there I had this realization that the reality is that growth comes with a lot of goodbyes. Sometimes there's just no way around this fact. It was also on this trip I stopped feeling bad and guilty and ashamed about the way my body looks. And I think I had it in my head that this is why things went bad with me and my partner of eight years. And the truth is that the last year broke me into a million pieces, but I picked myself up and I reminded myself who I am. And that's someone beautiful and worthy of being loved. And as soon as I did that, a lot of my illnesses started to go away. And I really started to heal. And I started going back swimming. And I started spending time with friends again. And just really starting to remember who I was before all this heartbreak occurred. And then I did something totally out of character. I did a podcast with Jeff Mara, and it's called She Lived with an Alien in Real Life. Now, I'll leave a link to this in the description box. It was a really crazy podcast for me to do, and I talked about a situation um, that I hadn't really shared with very many people before. But if you're interested in, in that podcast and listening to it, it's, it's pretty interesting and it's a great channel. So I'll leave that in the description box for you. And then after that, it was like blossoming. I started doing things to nurture my space, to make my house and my, my house feel like a home again. And uh, just things for myself, self-care and dressing up and feeling pretty. I did something I wanted to do my whole life. This ring is my grandmother's ring, and I was waiting until I got married to wear it. And then one day I was like, I'm just going to marry my damn self. <laughs> and I did that. So now I wear that ring every day proud, and I feel good about it because it's basically my commitment to myself to remember who I am. And then I started painting again. And these were unlike any other paintings I've ever done using mixed media, all the collage papers that I've been building up using my gel plate over the last couple of years. And I just can't explain how freeing it was to just do something so different for me. And these are big giant paintings, by the way. I mean, not giant, but like 18 by 24s and stuff like that all on canvas. And I'm just loving these, and these are all available still, by the way. And then I started doing some poor painting because it's been literally a long time since I did any pours, and these were just bright and colorful and fun. Something about that podcast sharing my story was so um, liberating for me. And I just felt something inside of me unlock. I have had people from all over the world reach out to me um, after that podcast with their own experiences about uh, living with angels or experiencing ETs, UFOs, all that kind of stuff. And I just 
you know, I've never really shared my story with anyone publicly because, you know, fear of being ridiculed and everything, but it was really so liberating and I could really feel it in my art. And I felt love from so many people. I got these beautiful um, ring and earrings made for me specifically with an inscription on the inside that said, you are never alone. And it was so touching. I also got introduced to quantum technology, which is this capsule that you'll see me wearing around my neck. And also this quantum block, which I'm going to go into more detail on my channel at some point in the future because I really want to share with you all of the amazing benefits I've gotten from this quantum technology. And again, this wouldn't have come if I hadn't have done this podcast. So sometimes you need to embrace the discomfort of the unknown and let go of all the analyzing and the details and the responsibility and the reasoning and expectations of what it should be and just feel and do and watch it unfold. And that's my best advice to you right now as I've gone through this process of healing and um, stepping into something that was really kind of scary for me and doing it anyway. So I know that was such a long intro, but I really wanted you guys to know what has happened and where I've been and what I've been doing. And for those of you who still wanted to see a painting video, here it is. <laughs> and this is one of the things that I painted recently. I actually cleaned my studio and found these cups, or I'm sorry, these paints already mixed up. And so what you're looking at is um, boy, white 24 karat gold, we had uh, nickel azo gold, some ca cadmium red or naphthol, naphthol red or whatever, uh, bronze and a little bit more white on there, and maybe a little bit of yellow too. But Trust me when I tell you I'm not sure exactly what all these paints were because they had been um, mixed up for months and months in my studio. And I just decided to do some little flip cups for fun. These are all certainly mixed with Floetrol, I can tell you that much for sure. And um, this is on a little canvas panel by Arteza. This is a 12 by 12 canvas panel. And as I was moving this paint around, I realized it was quite thick. I didn't really um, spend much time making sure it was, you know, perfectly thin or I, you know, it had, like I said, it had been mixed up for quite a while. But what I soon became uh, to realize was there's a huge spot over there that needed more paint. So I mixed up another little flip cup. This one had a little bit of quinacridone magenta in it, and you can really see that color that you perceive as pink is basically that white and that quinacridone magenta mixing together to form that pink color. So I had been longing to paint, of course, while I was sick, and it's impossible to do when you have no energy and I, I see this a lot with people you know when we get sick and we need time to heal painting is not really something that we can muster up the energy to do but it felt so good to play again <laughs> to just play in some paint and I didn't even care what the outcome was really I had no expectations about this piece whatsoever and yeah, it just felt good. It just felt good to get in the studio, even. And I really have not spent much time in my art studio this year. And, um, boy, I missed it, you guys. Really, really missed it. So here it is. Lots of pretty little patterns and interesting striations and 
I do wish there was more of that quinacridone magenta in other parts of this painting, but what I did realize that I put this on a canvas panel, and here's the downside. Canvas panels, if you leave too much paint on them, they just warp, and there is really no way to straighten them out after they warp. Once they warp, they're done. So this realization came to me <laughs> after I started mucking around. You know I can never just leave anything alone. And I could have left the painting as it is, but I was definitely certain that there it would warp. The, the paint was pretty thick and wet, and we're in a very humid time right now also in the city I live in. So I did my little balloon rolls. You saw some little black spray paint on there. Um, and I'm just, you know, noodling away. And I quickly realized that I've done too much or whatever, but, but more importantly, I need to get some of that paint off there. And Bloon Rolls is not going to cut it. So I put another canvas panel over the top, and then I did a diptych. Now that's just some of my special white it has a little bit of, uh, it's titanium white with a little bit of the cloud mixture that I use for my flowers. And now the paint that's on there is really, really thin. And then I took the other one and did the same little thing with a little bit of black spray paint, spray paint which I'm trying to just add a little bit of depth to the bottom of that. This would make a pretty diptych with a black frame and it this one is still available I I would sell them individually or as a, a a pair and I do have black wooden frames that they could go in and they would look gorgeous so you can always contact me on Facebook uh, Instagram Google, you know, mail, eat Gmail is fine. You can probably call me, I'm sure my number is in <laughs> all over the internet. And they're pretty, pretty little details. I know it's kind of busy, but I, I really love the flowers on this one. And I think, look at them as a set, they're just really pretty. That 24 karat gold really dried shimmery as well. And these did not shift at all, and the color shift was very minimal because I used mostly golden paints. And you can see here they are dried. Just a little tiny bit darker, and that's it. This isn't really capturing the gold, but... Anyway guys, thank you so much for coming along my journey with me, not just painting, but in life. I appreciate you guys so much and all of the kindness and support and love during such a tragic time. Don't forget who you are when you're going through your tragic times. You're a beautiful, loving, kind being worthy of love, and you're a beacon of light in my world. And I appreciate each and every one of you so much. Thank you so much for all that you do, and I can't wait to make more art videos just for you. Alright guys, have a beautiful day and a great summer.